The only real hope and change you'll ever get is from God. It's going to come from the Lord or it's not going to come at all. It's going to come when you admit that you can't do it and that you've got to have His help. One of the characteristics of the last days is that the hearts of mankind will grow old and their love for the things of God will dwindle. Unfortunately, believers are not left out of this awful experience. This is evident in the letter Jesus sent through John the Beloved to the church in Ephesus in Revelation 2, 4, and 5. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. Jesus wasn't addressing unbelievers in this passage, but spirit-filled Christians. Is this happening to you in your life? Has your love for Jesus dwindled over the years or over the past few months? Has your love for Jesus Christ waxed cold? Do you know what can do that to you? This world and the things of this world have an ability to try to take the attention of someone away from the Lord Jesus Christ onto things that will fade away. A job can take the place of your first love, Jesus Christ. The job that if something was to happen to you, they would replace you within a week. That is the harsh reality of this world. That job has been there before you were there, and it will be there long after you are gone. Don't prioritize that job over your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. A sport can take the place of your first love, Jesus Christ. A sports team can take the place of your first love, Jesus Christ. Money can do that. A person can do that to you. So I ask you again, my brothers and sisters in the Lord, has your love for Jesus dwindled over the years or over the past few months? The thing that matters is your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. There is no one, absolutely no one, who can love you like the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the one who came and died for you. Please name me five people in your life who would face the consequences of a crime you committed. Essentially, that's what Christ did. He paid the price for your sins and transgressions. Now, that is real love. He did it just so you can spend eternal life with Him. That is love. Jesus Christ loves you in a way you will never be able to fully comprehend. The truth is, no one on this earth can and will love you the way He loves you. His love is endless. It's everlasting. It is overflowing. It will consume you. Go back to your first love. Go back to Jesus. Fall out of love with this world. Fall out of love with sin. Fall out of love with porn. Fall out of love with lust. Fall out of love with sexual immorality. Fall out of love with anything that will attempt to take you away from the love of the Lord Jesus Christ. Love Him, for He loves you. Love Him for what He did for you on the cross. Love Him for what He is doing for you right now. In these days we live, although the hearts of mankind will continue to grow colder and colder, although the hearts and minds of mankind will continue growing from wickedness to wickedness, from perversion to perversion, let your heart, let your mind, let your love for Christ continue to grow, continue to flourish. Love the things of God. Love prayer. Make time to commune with God. Lay yourself bare before the one who created you. When you are going to work, pray to him. Pray always. Allow your love for the word of God to continue to grow. Allow your obedience to God to grow and grow from strength to strength. There is a great possibility that a believer's love for God could grow cold. If the love of Christ in the hearts of the believers in Ephesus could grow cold, how much more would it be in these last days? There are a number of factors that could be responsible for the loss of the fervency of heart and love we have towards God in these last days. However, coldness of heart is a very bad spiritual condition for any believer. A waning love for God is the foundation for being lukewarm and the cause for the backslidden state of several believers. And this is a great sign of the end time. This is the worst place for Christians to be. Luke 1, Matthew 24, 11 and 12 says, And many false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive many, and because iniquity shall abound, 
the love of many shall wax cold, whether it is because of the deluding influence of the false teachers or the persecution of the fear of death, the delay in the return of the Lord, the zeal of many false professors of the Christian faith will diminish. Their love toward God and toward the church will grow cold. The reason for the diminishing love of some believers would be the influence of some false teachers who preach the doctrine of eternal security and claim that there is no such thing as hell or judgment. For some, their hearts would grow cold because they can no longer endure the persecutions or tribulations they are faced with. Being a true born-again child of God is not easy in this world. We live in a world that is very much set up by the Antichrist, and some believers are adjusting their faith to be a faith which is shaped by this society and the culture. But that is not faith. Your faith, your belief, must be shaped by the Bible and what the Bible expects, not this world. The love of some believers would wane because they would begin to pursue the pleasures of this world at the expense of eternal bliss. This world does have some pleasures that will make you feel good. Sin can give you a false sense of security wrapped in pleasure. I would be lying to you if I told you that sin does not provide momentary pleasure, but that pleasure does not last. Sin will eventually bring one thing, and that is its wages. For the wages of sin are death. Also, the impatience of some believers will make them to heed to the false teachings that Christ will no longer return. All of these factors could be responsible for the waning of believers' love for Christ. However, none of them will be acceptable to God. True Christians, even those whose faith is weak, will persevere to the end. Jesus said in Matthew 24, 13, But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. In order to keep our hearts fervent and our feet unmovable, we must ensure to uphold the Christian virtue of endurance. Keep your love for God in the days we live in. Just like Cain's sin waits for us at the door and it desires to have you, do you not see how sin quite literally waits for you at every opportunity? Nowadays, it is easier to sin than any other point in human history. But we must endure to live righteous lives, endure to live holy lives, endure to live lives that seek and thirst after righteousness, endure to maintain the love of God, endure not to be lukewarm, endure not to lose our first love, Jesus Christ. Being lukewarm is the worst place for a child of God to be. We must, therefore, refuse to give heed to any false teaching that is against the laid down biblical doctrines. Apostle Paul said that if anyone or any creature preaches another message to us other than the message of Christ, which we have received, let such be accursed. The true and enduring believers have the love of Christ in them. This love is a spiritual fruit which is produced by the Holy Spirit in the lives of the believers according to Galatians 5.22. Believers that will refuse to grow cold in their love for Christ are those who have acknowledged how greatly Jesus endured the suffering of the cross for their sake. They also will choose to persevere in order to complement the finished work of Christ. In 1 Corinthians 13.1, the Bible says that love cannot fail. Therefore, a heart that will not grow cold concerning kingdom pursuit in this end time is such that have a genuine love for Christ. True love cannot become cold because it is sustained by Christ who is able to keep us from falling. Jude 1 24 emphasizes that it is Christ who is able to keep us from falling and to present us blameless before the presence of His glory. This will happen when we have grown in our love for Christ. Like Apostle Paul, who suffered many tribulations for the sake of God's kingdom, yet reaffirmed his loyalty to Christ in Romans 8, 35, 38, and 39. We must be able to say, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sore? For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God.
which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Notice also in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers. It takes the grace of God to change us, folks. How can you be saved? if you're not willing to repent. And the Lord Jesus Christ said, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish.